Hey guys, what's up? It's Daniel with TrailerMountain.com and today I'm testing and reviewing and setting up, on a windy day nonetheless, the Hyperlite Mountain Gear Echo 2 two-person sub two pound shelter. This is not a freestanding tent. This is a modular setup, so it comes in three pieces. So you have the, um, the tarp, you have the tent body, which is like the mesh, the noceum, and then you have the beak, which covers the front and adds a vestibule. Now, does not come with poles. You have to use your own trekking poles. I'll get to that in a minute. It also does not come with stakes, so keep that in mind. This is a very high end, made of Dyneema fabric, which used to be called Cuban fiber. Very lightweight, very waterproof, and made 100% right here in the United States. Here's Hyperlite's website right here. Definitely wanna make sure you check these guys out. These guys are making very, very high-end ultralight equipment and been doing so for a while. Definitely worth a look at. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my uh, camera all set up I'm gonna move it over here and we're gonna set this bad boy up. Now keep in mind, this is a super windy day and this is a very, very ultralight shelter. So this thing's gonna be blowing all over the place. So I wanted to show this to you specifically on a windy day because if somebody was considering buying something like this, you might wanna know this before you get it all set up. All right, so I'm gonna be setting up the Hyperlite Mountain Gear Echo Two Person Shelter. So as I said, the Echo 2 doesn't use tent poles. What it uses is your trekking poles to set up the, um, the main structure. You could also use trees if you get you know, pretty selective, but you wanna make sure you use trekking poles. So they have the two measurements listed on Hyperlite's website. So I'm gonna adjust them. I already pre-adjusted my poles. So this is the short pole and I just put a little Sharpie mark right there just so I can kind of keep an eye on things. And Okay, so that one's set. And this one is the front pole, which is a little bit longer. All right, so just so you can tell the difference, front pole, rear pole, okay? Front pole, both poles get mounted upside down, so that's how it's going to mount, just like that. The back pole is going to mount just like that. So I'm going to set that up right now. I'll show you how this bad boy sets up. This is a modular system, so you have three parts. First thing I want to do is I want to get the stakes out. This is the ultralight stake kit, and it's available on Hyperlite's gear, uh, Hyperlite Mountain Gear's website. Now in this bag, in this little stuff sack, I also have a Tyvek ground sheet. I'm not going to use one today just because it's pretty just much dirt, and there's no rocks or anything sharp under me. Um, but this is the actual tent body, or the, the actual body of the Echo 2. This little guy is the beak. And this is the tarp. So I'm gonna set the beak off. I'm gonna set the uh, tent body off. We'll get to that in a minute. First thing we wanna do is unravel this. Hyperlite has this thing set up pretty easy. There's a little blue circle right here on the front. This little guy right here. So this way you know that this is the front of the tarp. Let's get those out right now. And we'll get the long pole first. And the way this sets up is the spiker of your pole goes right into the blue hole, just like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this up just like so. And then on the string, kind of just mount that to the, in the ground, pretty solid. Now you don't wanna tighten it too much, but what you basically just wanna do is you wanna get your second pole. I push the stake in a little bit more. There we go, that should be pretty good. Basically, you just kind of balance it. So you get it the way you want it. Get your second pole, mount your second pole in. Get your other shepherd hook. Mount that in. Once you have that thing balanced, after that, I would kind of just kind of reverse the process. I'd go back to the front, keeping the balance. I would start with the other. And once you have it somewhat set up, it's, it's almost going to stay up on its own. And you get that all dialed in the way you want it there. You get this one. Once that's dialed in, then you can pretty much move over the other corners, the back corner essentially here. It makes a huge difference here when you have um, soft ground. 
setting this thing up in uh, rocky ground is really difficult. And once you have it all dialed in, then you go around and you just kind of tighten everything up. Make sure the center pole is upright and nice and tight. Tighten up this corner here and that's the overall design. So that's set up, that's ready to rock. I'm gonna just secure this back one a little bit better because it looks a little loose. There it goes, that's way more tight. That pole back here, nice and tight there, nice and tight there. So once that's in place, then you can do the sides. These are the big stakes. I like that there's a little hole through them, so if you need to tie off, you can. Get a little bit more slack on this one. Put that in. Make that nice and tight. Bring that one down a little bit more. Make that nice and tight. All right, so there's your overall design. Got your 10 poles set up. Which is your trekking poles. That's basically it. They just kind of mount right on there. And that's basically how it sets up. You have your tensioner right here. And just pull on that, it makes things nice and tight. Once this thing is set up, it's not going anywhere. Front corner, they do have these little snaps. I'll get to that in a minute. That's for the beak on the sides. There's your tension guy line. I pull down on that, make it nice and tight. And this is also how you attach the beak with that little D-ring. Keep all this nice and tight. Everything is stitched together, triple stitched and very, very tough. Backside here. You can set this thing up as just the tarp too. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna set up the actual body. And obviously the door goes to the front. This is the front section right here. And the way this sets up is actually really unique. These actually clip to the underside of the tarp. So there's little D-rings right here. Kind of just clip those in place. Come around the back side here, clip in the other ones. Once that's set up, then you have little clips for the top. This little guy goes right here to the top. Now here's where you use the last four stakes. You can just see that the whole thing seems like it wants to blow away just because it's so light. Basically, you just stake out the tent floor, just like so. All four corners get these stakes. And then what you do is you use your tension rods here to keep tension on everything. Or your tension, uh, your shock cords. Now another cool spot, and I'll move the camera around just so you can see it, but there's also ones from the tent body to the underside of the tarp too. So I'm gonna get to that right now. All right, so now your tent body is all installed, ready to go. It's all staked down. These are the little tension cords I was telling you about. So you basically just kind of pull that and that keeps some tension on here. And if you see along the back side here, that's the inner, right there, I'll zoom in a little bit. That's the inner shock cord that holds from the tent body to the tarp. Really gonna increase the uh, size inside the tent, which is great. Tons of room on the inside, but you can just tell how light this thing is. It's just flowing in the wind. There's the top section, how it connects. And you have a fully enclosed shelter. Now the backside here, it is pretty well closed off. You can lower your, your, uh, your, your hiking pole here, and that's gonna really lower the roof line and then you can adjust everything accordingly so if it's in like extreme wind you're not going to get hit with like side wind and side rain which is really great you can just tell how it now when you want to open it one zipper string just tie it off super easy it's not rocket science here and then you can get in in and out relatively easy because this whole section opens up. Now keep in mind, there's no pockets on the inside of this thing. I wish there were, but it's a minimalist shelter. You don't really need a pocket. Granted, if you did have a pocket, it would be nice. But for me, just sitting up inside, my head hits the, uh, the net, the bug netting. And that kind of, 
I don't know. I don't really like that as much. I wish there was more headroom. What we're really talking about here is a minimalist shelter. You know, it's not supposed to be luxurious. It's supposed to be as light as it can be and help you reduce your pack weight, reduce the pack size, and uh, really keep you more comfortable while you're hiking and getting to your destination. But as for size inside, I have plenty of room for me, my wife, if she was to come with me. I mean, I have like a full arm's length at my side here. Plenty of room, plenty of room at my feet and plenty of room down at my feet as well. So now I'm gonna put the beak on. All right, so here's the beak. And the beak is simple. You know me, I'm a big fan of branding. I love that the Hyperlite Mountain Gear logos are everywhere. So the beak sets up pretty easily. It's Velcro. This little guy kind of goes around and then Velcros, okay? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go around it like so. And we're gonna Velcro that down, just like that. Now we're gonna take these. These little guys go to the corners and snap it in place, just like I said. And then we have these, which go to the sides, these little D-rings, and that's what secures the fly or the beak, rather, onto the front of the shelter. So once again, snap to here. And then this guy goes to the D-ring right here. And you just tighten that down. And then you're all set. then what I would do is I would use the same shepherd's hook on the front here. That's it. That's all you're gonna need. Just make sure everything's nice and secure. Zip that up and then you can kind of fold this off to the side. So then you can tie this off right here and that'll hold it steady. So you can set it up like that and you could have half vestibule or full vestibule, whichever you prefer. So the beak sets in and nestles right around here with this Velcro. Now in like extreme rain, I mean, I guess a little water can still get in right here, but you know, you could always put a piece of tape around it if you really, really get into that kind of a trouble. Um, but yeah, so this thing goes down, snaps in right here onto the corner of the tarp, and then goes over here to this little guy, which is another tension rod or tension strap, and that goes right here to the uh, center of the tarp. I don't know why I keep saying tension rod. And then over on the side here, you have a huge vestibule to put all your stuff under. Plenty of room inside. And then you can tie this thing off if you really need to. If you just want to have some increased airflow but still increase some shade, you could do all of that. Yeah, overall design, I really like it. It is a minimalist shelter. As I said, this thing is sub two pounds. But plenty of room inside for two people. You can zoom in a little bit more. There's ample floor space. I love the Hyperlite Mountain Gear logos everywhere, even on the, uh, the zipper pulls too, so good job Hyperlite. Another great thing that I really enjoy about this shelter is that it is 100% made in the good old United States. Nothing is outsourced. It looks a little funky right here, like it's kind of bulging, but it's actually not. But yeah, I mean, you could always tighten this down a little bit more. Once it's here, you know, no rain is really going to blow in this way. Obviously, you have to set this thing up accordingly, but if the wind shifts in the middle of the night, you may be in some trouble. Another thing to consider, too, is you don't actually have to use this front hook. You can actually use a stake, rather, and kind of just stake this out a little bit further out here. Big old Hyperlite logo right over here, and everything is fully enclosed. It's going to keep you completely dry from rain, hail, any kind of inclement weather. And just a really nice design. Not only that, but you get this really cool Hyperlite stuff sack which is also made of that Dyneema fabric. It used to be called Cuban fiber. And in here, I just, I have my own Tyvek ground sheet. So didn't set that up today just because, but I cut it up to size of uh, about the, the Hyperlite Mountain Gears uh, ground sheet, because this is just some Tyvek that I had laying around the house and I wanted to use it instead. But all in all, once this thing is set up, I mean, This thing's not going nowhere. It's nice and sturdy, really strong. All right, guys, so that's my review of the Hyperlite Mountain Gear Echo two-person ultralight shelter from Hyperlite Mountain Gear. These guys are making excellent products made in the United States. They are high dollar. Um, this is probably one of the most expensive shelters I've ever seen. 
uh, advertised. But once again, you get what you pay for. You know, good luck finding a two-person shelter that's this light. You know, this is 1.8 pound. So it's that's nothing compared to a two-person shelter that some of them are, you know, two to two and a half to three pounds or heavier. So every ounce counts in the backcountry. If you can shave a half a pound or a pound or even more off of your gear, that's just gonna make you more comfortable. Not to mention, you don't have to sacrifice space, which is great. The only thing I wish it had would be more headroom up top, right up top here. So if I'm changing, I'm getting some clothes on, and it's kind of cramped just because I'm six foot. If I was shorter, it wouldn't be a big deal. If you guys have any questions or comments about the Echo 2 from Hyperlite Mountain Gear, please leave those down below and I will get back to you as quickly as I can. Also too, please like, share, and subscribe. It really means a lot when people subscribe to my channel and like what I have to say about the gear that I'm testing. I am also going on the John Muir Trail this August from Horseshoe Meadow and outside of Lone Pine all the way to Yosemite. It's gonna be a, just under 250 miles with some great friends. And this tent may be coming with me. I haven't quite decided yet just because of the Sierras, there's a lot of rocks and setting this thing up in like a rocky kind of a terrain would be pretty difficult at best. So that's my only thing. If you're setting this thing up in really rocky area, it's probably not the perfect tent. Soft ground, um, moderate ground, hard ground should be fine. Sand, uh, you might want to use some rocks because the stakes will pull out in the wind. Uh, other than that, this thing is pretty solid. Because we're doing this uh, John Muir Trail through hike, we're also doing it as a charity hike. So make sure you tune. So make sure you tune into the end of this video because there will be a little clip in my end card for a gear raffle that I'm raising money for a charity for Big City Mountaineers. This is over $1,400 worth of brand new backpacking gear and definitely worth a look at. A minimum donation is 10 bucks for the charity, but to get a raffle ticket is 50 for one ticket. 100 for three tickets and 150 for six tickets so i'm only selling 200 tickets and they're all virtual they're all online i'll make sure i leave that link down in my description box down below get on there make a donation everybody's got 10 bucks just get on there and make a difference in a kid's life thanks again for tuning into my latest video please keep checking back for more gear reviews outdoor related hodgepodge gear talk and giveaways take care guys get outdoors